Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Atelier, the Painter's Studio by AEG. It's two to four players, takes about 25 to 45 minutes, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Atelier, you're basically going to be playing as painters, utilizing students to place paint on a palette and then make paintings. There's a certain amount of rounds you're gonna play based on the type of paintings that you produce, and certain paintings are just gonna be black, uh, plain paintings, other ones are going to have little symbols on them, and at a certain point after you've placed enough paintings down, the game is going to end. What's interesting with this game is you're going to be rolling die and using those die as actions. There are five different actions in the game, or six I should say, and you're going to be able to play students and move students and paint paintings and of course gain paint all at the same time based on where your students are located or if you get lucky enough and roll a six. On your turn you have to only use one die and if you want you can actually not use a die I instead take certain things called inspiration which will allow you to do certain things throughout the game but you can kind of take additional actions on your turn up to the point where you have no more actions left and other players can keep going as long as you have any actions left on your turn at the, end, at the beginning of your next turn you'll roll whatever die are left over and continue until everybody has no more actions left which gives way for certain players to be able to do certain things which are pretty interesting in the game once the game is over you tally up all the points based on your patron cards as well as paintings and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. It looks complex and intricate, but really the game's fairly simple with a little bit of strategy. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, I'll show you what's in it, and then how to play. So here we have Atelier and everything included in the game. As you can see, it plays up to four players, and there are four of these player boards here, which represent where you're going to be placing your paint, your students, and your die. Every player is also going to see that, depending on what you roll, is the type of actions you will take. Whether it's a 1 and 2, where you place a student, a 3, which lets you move them, a 4, which lets you collect paint based on where your students are located, 5, painting a painting, and 6, gaining any paint of your choosing, regardless of whether there's a student there or not. This is going to be the end game trigger, which will give you four points if you do trigger the end game. And that's based on placing paintings with little stars on them. This is the painting deck, and these are the paint paintings. And what are required in order to paint these paintings? So for instance, this one here is three blue and three red. And this one here is one of each of the three different colors shown. The number of points presented on these cards is how many points you get at the end of the game for painting them. And at the very bottom of the cards are going to give you a specific, specific ability when you paint these paintings of what you will gain when you paint them. The last thing to note is on the side of the card it will tell you whether or not you need to remove a student from this area here and place it back on your board if you want to paint that painting and what type of painting it is on the very bottom right symbol. These are the paints and there's four different colors to be played on four different portions of your board. This is the first player marker a set of four dice for each player, a set of four different students colors for each player as well, inspiration tokens which you'll be utilizing especially when you do not want to use the dies you rolled and what you gain from basically re removing them from their player board one will let you re-roll die two will let you paint a painting and three will let you draw additional patron cards patron cards are end game scoring cards that will give you victory points based on certain requirements and you can gain them at the beginning of the game and as well as when you draw a patron from inspiration or whether a card tells you so from the painting deck uh, the last thing you'll need to know is that you're going to get this nice little rule book here and of course the box for the game. Let's go ahead and show you a two-player version of Atelier. So here we have a two-player game of Atelier, in which case every single player is going to get their painting students and they'll place them down in the area provided with the little symbol of the students. They're also going to get their four die, which they're also placed over here next to their die symbols. Each player is also going to get two patron cards, which look like this. They'll choose between the two and put one back on the bottom of the deck, and after that it's pretty much ready to go. Everybody's going to get one inspiration token, and the first player, whoever painted the painting last, is going to get this first player marker. All the rest is already set up. The painting deck will have their seven paintings sprawled out here, and every player in backwards of turn order will place down a student next to a paint pile. Students can choose, or players can choose to place their students next to each other if you'd like. Make sure you have a stable set of inspiration tokens that players can just go ahead and grab, as well as there's always going to be those seven paintings. To begin the game, simply take your four die and the first player and roll your die. Go ahead and place this patron card under here. Then after you've rolled your die, you can select any actions you would like. These actions using inspiration are always free, but must always be done before you pass. The first one is just one, which will allow you to reroll all your die. The second is to paint a painting, which functions the same way as a five would. And then the third is to spend three inspiration to draw an additional top card from the patron deck. 
Here I've rolled a two, two fours, and a five. So if I want, I can use my two and I can place a student out in any of the four piles, including the same space as another student I already have. Uh, if I use a three, that will let me move students from one location to another with these little paint piles. With a four, I can collect a paint, but I can only collect paint based on where my students are located. So for instance, if I spent this two, it's gonna go here, and if I spent this four, I can then collect a blue or a red paint. And that's gonna be based on which paintings I'm gonna actually want to collect here. So if I wanted to build this painting, having these guys here is probably a good idea. So I'll go ahead and take a blue paint and place it on my uh, area here, my player board, right next to the blue marker. If I want, I can save this for something else. And then with a five, I can paint a painting. But the only way I can paint a painting is if I have the required paints in order to do so. And right now, I don't. However, I am interested in painting this painting, so I will go ahead and use another four, and I will go ahead and get a red and place it on my player board. I'll save this for later, so I will choose to end my turn. The next player in turn order is gonna go ahead and roll their die as well. I'll actually roll them over here. And now I've got a one, a two, a three, and a six. Six is interesting because I go ahead and take any paint from any area regardless of whether I have a student there or not. So maybe I want to build this one. So I don't have a student in the blue, so I'll take a blue. Then I'll use my six and place it over here in my spent zone. I've got a one, a two, and a three. So on a one or a two I can place a student, so I'll go ahead and place one. Maybe I want to place it in this red area here, so that will allow me to get that red because I already have the blue. So now I have red and, red and yellow are available. These two I don't need, so I'll go ahead and set them aside for the next turn. And it goes back to this player here. He's going to go ahead and take his die, he's going to go ahead and roll it, and then he's going to decide, does he want to use this die for the number value, or should he instead take an inspiration token? If he does, he'll have to lose this die and gain an inspiration token, but if he likes this one, which he does, he'll take a, uh, he can choose, oh sorry, he doesn't, it's a five, he can choose to paint a painting. So unfortunately he can't, so he'll go ahead and dump this die and gain an inspiration token because he's not able to paint a painting yet. There's no painting out here that just has one red and one blue. But if he had a yellow and a green, he could paint this one. Now he's done, he's out of actions. This player here can choose to go ahead and roll their die and then assign them once again. So he got a four, which will allow him to collect a paint. He'll do that. And he's gonna go ahead and select a red. And then he's choosing to not use this one. Now his turn's over, but there's nobody else to take a turn, so he's going to go ahead and take another turn again. Roll his die again, but he always has to take at least one action. And here, placing a student, he doesn't want to do that, so instead he's going to take one of these inspiration markers and use this die up. Now, neither player has any die left remaining, so in which case the first player marker is going to move to this player over here. This player is going to roll and continue the game. That's the basic idea of the game. Now, whenever you paint a painting, so for instance, let's just go ahead and say that in this case he had this and he went ahead and built, made this painting. These paints are gonna go back to the area in which they were found before. This painting would go ahead and go to the player's tableau and you're gonna get whatever bonus it has. And this one says at the beginning of each round, you gain one inspiration. Very useful, at the end of the game you get two points. But it has the symbol here, which says you have to lose a student and put it back on your player board when you gain this. So in this case, he would have to lose a student, goes back to his player board, he would spend his paint, and he would get this painting worth two points at the end of the game. When you build a painting, place a new painting out, and continue. The game is going to end when one player gathers three masterpieces, and masterpieces are these little paintings with stars on them. So when you acquire three paintings with stars on them, that will trigger the end game. You'll finish that round, you'll play one more round out, and then you're going to tally your victory points. Victory points are located on the paintings as well as maybe on the text, as well as on your patron cards. Worth two victory points for each painting, uh, paint pile where you have at least three students. So there's reasons why you're going to have more than one student in certain paint piles, because you're going to gain victory points for doing so. There's a whole bunch of different victory point uh, cards that you can gain from patron cards, and most of them you're going to gather from either the inspiration or from the text on the bottom of the paintings. The player who gathers three masterpieces will also gather this bonus four-point victory uh, painting, which is just kind of an inclu included uh, bonus for being able to complete the game first before anybody else. And that is basically the idea of the game. Tally up your points with your 
masterpiece as well. Not your paintings, your masterpieces, this is your little bonus thing here, your patron cards, and see who has the most points. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game Atelier. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So what do I think about the game Atelier? Now the first thing I want to say about this game is it has a really unique, interesting aspect to it. Uh, interesting is usually one of those words people don't like me using, but it's interesting because you can take all of your actions on your turn, the first turn, and then let the other players continue playing until all of their actions are spent, and they might go back and forth with each other. Because you simply might roll all the die you want on your first turn, and if you have all the die you want, then those are the ones you want to use, right? Whereas if you don't roll what you want to roll, you can choose just one of them, or maybe two of them, and then on your next turn you'll get a chance to roll them, so that everybody has a fair and balanced aspect. And that's the way of making sure that the die doesn't stack against you, because you'll have opportunities to re-roll provided you want to. But let's say you have only one die left, and you roll that one die, and it's not what you want. Well, then you can still take inspiration, which will allow you to paint paintings, gain patron cards, and of course re-roll your die on the next turn, giving you even more chance or benefit to get what you want. So it has a very interesting feel to it. It's actually a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. I, thought, I figured this game would take maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and it, it doesn't. It takes maybe an hour or less. And uh, for two players, I think it took us about 25 to 30 minutes, which was pretty cool as well. All the artwork in the game with all these paintings is beautiful. I really enjoy the fact that they have all the different types of paintings, a Sunday on Le Grand Jatte, uh, yellow dancers in the wings, so, so on and so forth. If you like paintings, you're going to be a fan of this game. As well as the color palettes on here, this is a really unique touch to it. Having your paints on there, your dye, as well as your students, tells you everything you need to know on the game right here. Very simple, very easy to understand. Being able to gather paints from your students, or of course getting lucky enough to just gather whatever paintings you want, or paints you want is nice as well. These certain paintings are also going to have high victory points for a higher cost, and there's going to be additional costs maybe located on them, as well as some benefits that could be either passive abilities, or, or simply abilities that once they come into play, they'll grant you something useful like, for instance, inspiration. The game is a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. And I think for the most part, if you like a calm, relaxing game with a little bit of luck, a little bit of strategy all mixed in to a game that's fairly non-complex, but also has a lot of really uh, specific choices you need to make to make sure you succeed, you're gonna enjoy this. There is a little bit of competitive, there's a competitive nature to the game because what can happen is, let's say that you want, oh, I don't know, let's go ahead and pick a painting here. Let's say that you want yellow dancers, right? And this is gonna cost two blue as well as two yellow. And your opponent has two blue and one yellow and you only have two blue. Well, if you're the next player and you're gonna roll, you can choose to use all your reactions to try and get exactly what you need for this painting and to take it. And if you do, your opponent might be unhappy that you so so went, went, so went and did that, right? And in this case, there is a little bit of, I guess, hate drafting that could occur in this game. Or sometimes those just paintings you're gonna certainly want over others based on these patron cards. Cause certain patron cards are gonna require you to get certain uh, paintings. So for instance, victory points based on the number of specific painting types. And you can get up to 15 points on this card provided you get all the same type of painting cards. And then maybe you want that specific type of painting card, but you also want paintings that involve the color yellow. So that will kind of specifically make you choose certain paintings, whereas some people might think you're hate drafting them on another sense. You're actually get it, gathering these paintings because those are the ones you need based on your victory, hidden victory conditions. So it has a very interesting twist to it as well right there. Uh, the game, if you're looking for a game that plays quickly, a game that is beautiful in nature, a game that has a really cool theme involved in painting, as well as a game that can be done done and explained relatively easily, I think you're going to enjoy this game. For those of you who don't like die rolling games simply at all, because there is obviously still gonna be luck as to regardless of how many times you roll, you might have to just keep gathering inspiration if you don't like that. Um, as well as the fact that some people can hate draft you and can take the paintings that you want just before you get them, and you're not really like kind of plan ahead for that, then this might not be for you. Overall for me, it was an excellent game. Me, Grant, enjoyed playing this game two players, and we played it three and four, and it flows smoothly with all the different player counts. Overall, Atelier is a thumbs up for me. I strongly suggest you take a look at it if it just sounds kind of interesting to you.